Welcome to Soul Blight. I thought I'd give a kind of a quick walkthrough and play through while I go through one of my better rounds of Soul Blight. Getting used to the combat, learning how to parry and everything. It took me a little while because uh, I just wanted to go in all guns blazing and I kept dying. Now when I learned how to parry properly and just how to keep my distance and swipe, that kind of sounded like a good plan and it worked for most of the enemies but they get tougher later on. Now here I'm just looking at all the event cards. Don't know much about those. I'm impatient, I just want to get stuck in. Now when you walk around you can practice in the practice room, which is always handy, so you can go in here, practice against the dummy, and it'll tell you exactly what to do. Pretty straightforward. But again, the enemies move quite quickly, so you have to think on your feet real quick, and any mistiming or pressing the wrong button and you are dead. So yeah, the best thing is to get around the back of the enemy so you can do the most damage and kill them. Usually with one hit as well. And it's satisfying when you kill the enemies because they are a pain. And I've come across about four or five different enemies at the moment. So if there's more to come. I, I know I'm going to get my arse added to me by tougher enemies. But this game is unforgiving and difficult. You know, it doesn't hold your hand. The storage chest there is just to put all your stuff in. When you die, you can, and well, I'll show you later on in the video, but you can drop off certain items in the sanctuaries. The uh, downside is um, the lim you have limited spots, so I collected a lot of good stuff. I was just grabbing everything I could. But that slows your movement down, so you've got to be warned, you know. I really have to pay attention to what your companions, your helpers, you could call it the Mission Impossible team, because this is a Mission Impossible. And they'll give you advice, and you better pay attention to it. Now, if you're dropping gold bars and stuff like that into the Sanctuary, that is a good decision. But the downside is, I dropped in the wrong place and I lost some gold bars, which I'll point out to you later on. <laughs> Again, this game has a little bit of a learning curve, but you'll get the hang of it. It is tough. You know, it's nice to see my um, score, score 5th, uh, not too bad, not too shabby. 39 minutes in game I played here, so I was quite proud. This just a bit edited. See, gives really, really good tips there, and that's fine. And of course, this gave him the uh, augmented sword later. He gave me basically bugger all, just more tips. And I was kind of disappointed, I thought I'd get like a permanent item or something. So that was a bit of a bummer. The gatekeeper, he just guards the gate. And you have little spots here to put stuff. Not that I'm going to get that much stuff, and I'm not going to live long enough to enjoy anything. And it's all permanently gone when you die anyway, so it kind of sucks. I hope they bring an easier mode where you can drop off more items in the gate. The game itself looks fantastic. Now this tree of life, the soul tree, this is what you've got to look after. There's um, some things that you have to look after that, and keep an eye on, and that's your stats. You've got the normal ones, you know, like defense and attack. You've got speed or mobility, and you've got the synergy. And you can pick up trait cards. Now you select your trait cards in game here. And these will either give you a buff or a nerf or just hamper your progress. You've got to choose carefully. Some of these traits will not um, help you if you mix them up wrongly. So, you know, you have to be really careful what you choose and what you decide to do. Uh, I went for the one with the better synergy, you know, just a bit of strength and power and everything just to make myself stronger. So I went for that one. It seemed like a good idea at the time, you know. Again, this is a game that uh, really has good sound quality as well. The look and style, especially when you're walking across this little bridge here, is really awesome because you know it just really puts you um, in the mood, you know, in the zone. I could say it's uh, very atmospheric. Yeah, I'll go with atmospheric. <laughs> but I love the way the bridge moves, and again, the camera angles really do add a bit of sense of uh, woe to the game, you know, 
you're automatically on edge if you're thinking, oh wow, I'm at a different angle, I've got to fight at this angle or that angle. And that's kind of strange, but it works. The enemies are pretty tough, they're on the ball, they're here, everything. See, the red cone is their vision, as you know from games that use the same sort of thing. This guy, I'm a bit faster than him, so I take him out. But the heavy guys that move faster will cause you problems, so you really got to be fast in this game. So I try and stick to light armor if you can, or fleet of foot, you know, so you're actually faster than the enemy. Obviously, try not to get killed or hit. I search everywhere because some of the uh, places where the treasure kept are really kind of out of the way. You don't notice the enemies. They'll hear you coming. He goes, here comes number two. They heard me. Boom. There you go. Using the swipe. Wooden bridges. When you walk across them, as you can tell, they make a lot of noise. Now, I know a lot of you guys are probably be wanting to get some tips, but the best thing about this game is you have to just learn it yourself and that's what I like anyway I don't like using guides unless I really have to now some of the advice that I've been given is use creep as much as you can but if it doesn't work be prepared to fight to death you know you see I'm waiting for him to make his move and as soon as he misses and I've dodged him I can take him out quite easily there Thankfully I'm quite fast. There we go. So you search for items and you can transmutate stuff. And it'll either change them into powerful items or just basically food, something that can help your character progress in the game. Something a little different anyway. Now, strangely enough, when you kill enemies, they don't drop anything. A bit of a surprise that, but it rewards stealth for not killing. I think there's a message there for everybody. You see, I'm waiting for the cone, and you know, I don't know where the others are. There's just, just too many. I just worried they're gonna just all rush me and kill me. Again, there are three bosses in this game that you have to meet and kill. And then it will store life to the soul tree. In other words, the game's won. You've done your duty. And it's uh, pretty daunting, really, to tell you the truth. I, I don't think I can do it. I think it's going to kick my ass this game for a long time. But it's procedurally generated levels. are really good. And that's what I like about it. It's all totally random. But again, I'm, I'm always old-fashioned, though. I do like, you know, crafted levels that have been created by a, a human mind rather than a program. But hey, I think it suits this game. I'm going to moan because it needs to be a bit... Well, easier for me. I think, yeah, the storage space problem, yeah. <laughs> In game, when you're fighting and picking up armor, that's all well and good. But remember, you get four injuries, you're dead. There's a little frog you can pick up, don't eat him. <laughs> give him a little pet. A little stroke on the head, and it'll give you some well needed energy, you know, some very good synergy there, you know your health will be increased but again these taints that you pick some of them are just uh, they'll either help you make you powerful for a little while or permanently or other times they'll just uh, harm you if you do something else that's wrong you know that's pretty good but there's just so the best thing about this game is there's just so much to find, you know. But this game is definitely one one of my favourites at the moment. I just love all this. It's just looking at all the stats and everything. All this good stuff that I'm going to lose very shortly. And I'm amazed I lasted so long. But again, you're probably wondering, you know, this is a quick review. It's just a talk through the... Well, my gameplay. It's just the feels really. I think this game's definitely worth buying. I said it in the early video. I, I really like the graphics. The graphic style is fantastic. The sound's good too. The fight mechanics, now I got used to them. Didn't get used to them in the first video that I did. I'm still kind of newbie. Now I've played a good few hours of this game. 
yeah, I'm getting used to the mechanics of fighting, as you can see. I still have a control issue where I kind of drift to the left to the right, and it did get me killed several times. And he actually got me caught by the guards a few times as well, which I survived in this game. But when I was fighting the last two people, at the end of the video, as you'll see, because uh, obviously it's gameplay and commentary, I'm not going to talk all the way through it. But the rest of the game really is uh, just wonderful. And I have to highly recommend it. It's just, it's addictive as well. You just get so annoyed that you've lost all this good stuff that you want to go back and do really well again because you know all the moves and you know that the first few guys would be easy to kill and you can get a lot of loot. And then it's just making it to the second sanctuary to save all. I thought you could save uh, these chests. And the empty chest, you just drop stuff in. That would have been a better mechanic, I think. But it's tough for a reason this game. Again, you see I kept my distance. Transportation, yeah. Drop items in there and as as I said before, make you powerful or well, they don't. They just drop you uh, energy and food. But there we go. So I'm gonna leave you to watch the rest of the gameplay. Hope you enjoy it. I did pretty well. You know. Thirty-nine minutes, yeah. Again, edited, edited. But yeah, thirty-nine minutes. And I'm really impressed to survive that long. Number five in the world. That's not bad, is it?
Well, thank you for watching this far. Now this is the sanctuary I told you about. You can leave items here in the storage chest. To my horror, this is what happened. I hadn't really paid much attention to it through previous playthroughs of the game. But there's only two spaces. I can only actually drop two items in here. And one of those is taken up by a silver bar. So yeah, something I've already saved is taken up the space. So I can only save one item. Oh my god, if I could save 8 items and then transfer the rest to my bedside storage area, that would be great. I'd like that. No. No. The game is tough. Bloody tough. Look at all this good stuff I got. I'm absolutely gutted. So there we go. And I'll leave you to watch the rest of the gameplay. And I know people do use the rate these games, like 9 out of 10 or 2 out of 10 or whatever out of 10. I don't like to do that. It's either you want to buy it or you don't, and I recommend you do buy this game. It's pretty darn decent for a game of death game. Roguelike, dungeon, exploring, that's good. Even though it's not really technically a dungeon, it's a bit true. Oh well. There we go. I'll catch you guys soon with more gameplay on Soul Blight in the near future, I promise. I'll be playing it. Do a few more longer runs if I can beat 39 minutes. It'll be uploaded for you all uncut and yeah brag and rights see you soon